welcome back. I hope everyone is doing fantastic. This video is of course going to be the tutorial that many of you have been waiting for and that is single sided staking on Sourceswap Labs. We can see this tweet out from them earlier today, single sided staking early access is now live. If you hold one or more of the Plank Epoch collectible NFTs in your hash pack, you will now be able to stake your source here. And by the time this video goes live, full staking available to all. So public launch should be available. That is 11 uh, p.m. Um, on the 3rd of December. What we can see as well is single-sided staking has already exploded across Hedera. In the first hour of that single-sided staking early access going live, over 33% of the circulating supply of source has actually been staked inside that infinity pool, with public access, of course, being open December the 3rd at 11 p.m. UTC. 33% is a huge portion of the circulating supply to be staked. Not just that as well, we've seen TVL's total value locked on SourceSwap Labs exceeding 20 million US dollars. And of course, again, they're not saying single-sided staking be, will be going live today at 11 p.m. UTC, onwards and upwards. Not only that, going forward as well, it is no coincidence that SourceSwap has breached the $20 million of TVL the same day the single-sided staking release schedule is nearing completion. Over $4 million worth of source tokens have already been staked in the early access by holders of Plank Epoch collectibles. That's over 40% of the circulating supply. It'll be exciting to see what those numbers look like when we're open for public access. Phase five is the final phase of the single-sided staking release schedule, and it'll be happening today at 11 p.m. UTC. Now, of course, as well, this has been fully audited, and it's one of the reasons why we saw some slight delays um, to the launch of single-sided staking because of you know, it's imperative um, for the team, part of their core um, sort of ideology behind the products and features they release is of course making sure they've been fully audited and those have indeed been audited by Hacken. I'll pull those up right now. So as we can see on screen here again, the Hacken Club audit report for single-sided staking is of course in. Again, 9.7 out of 10 overall score with 10 out of 10 on security. Of course, Hacken as well being a major cybersecurity service provider, audit provider within the crypto space and have a very good track record. And Hacken as well being the team that previously audited the smart contracts that have been utilized and leveraged by the source of swap DEX over the past several months or so since it has been live. Now, before we also we jump into how to actually use the single sided staking on um, source of swap labs, I will talk about the rewards quickly, um, as of course it's very important. So single-sided staking, this is available in their documentation section over on the SourceSwap website. I will try and leave links to all of this down in the description. We can see single-sided staking allows users to earn yield by providing liquidity for one type of asset in contrast to liquidity provisions on AMMs. Now, of course, I had a previous tutorial on the channel, which is still relevant. Liquidity provision is still a thing and you can earn higher yield from that but of course you have the risk of impermanent loss. If that sounds like a bunch of key words and jargon to you, I urge you to check out that previous video I did do as I try and break down and explain what impermanent loss is and the, the sort of drawbacks and benefits of providing liquidity. Of course, in single-sided staking, you aren't providing a pair of liquidity, you are just staking and this is exactly the same as what is effectively happening when you stake your HBAR, either via sort of Stader, platform or even the native staking and of course there are videos on my channel for both of those. In the case of source swap, users stake the source in the infinity pool and receive a liquid receipt token called X source. So again, very similar to how Stader's HBAR X token works, you stake your HBAR into the platform and you receive a receipt liquid token called HBAR X. In this case, it's source for X source. The ratio of X source to source begins at one and increases in perpetuity, so indefinitely always, as the infinity pool automatically compounds via source buybacks and farm emissions. Again, many of you that have been utilizing and watching my videos on Stader's platform for their HBAR X staking, this is working in exactly the same fashion, but for the source token, this X source token is perpetually increasing in value against the um, derivative, which is of course the na native source token itself. Users can stake X source, previously referred to as Sourcer, in community pools as well to earn HTS tokens from projects being incubated by Headstarter. 
The X source token will also be used for governance and liquidity provisioning to the source of swap AMM. So this is obviously uh, introducing you to the triple reward structure. So in this model, yield is derived from three distinct sources. You can uh, the swap fees across all source swap liquidity pools, yield farm emissions, and H bar native staking rewards. The latter reward mechanism involves dynamically staking all H bar in the wrapped H bar contract to a permissionless node. A high level description of the reward structure is as follows. The 0.05% protocol fee incurred on all token swaps currently accumulates in an account called the fee 2 via Uniswap V2 smart contracts. This revenue goes to the DAO treasury at present, but will be reallocated to source buybacks in the mothership.sol, aka the infinity pool. Once single-sided staking is implemented, the brew contract is authorized to withdraw LP tokens from the fee too and burn them to itself, after which point it swaps the underlying assets, token 0 and 1, for wrapped HBAR and source tokens using authorized user specific bridges, which are token addresses that facilitate the conversion to source. Once the bridge swaps are complete, the contract pulls its allocation of HBAR native staking rewards from intermediary payment splitter contract. These HBAR are then wrapped and added to the brew contracts wrapped HBAR balance. The final swap to take place is a conversion of wrapped HBAR to source, resulting in source being the only token in the brew contract left. This source, along with the 3% of source token emissions from the farm contract, is then being sent to the infinity pool. And we can see here in the infinity pool, since the balance of the source in the infinity pool is always increasing perpetually, so too is the ratio of source to X source. Conversely, the relative value of X source to source is increasing. Consider the following example. User A is the first to stake source in the infinity pool. They deposit 10 source and receive 10 X source. So therefore the initial ratio is one to one. And this is again, exactly how H bar to H bar X functions and operates. And currently the ratio is still one to one at the moment. And hopefully it will be if you guys get in early. So you effectively deposit 10 source in and you receive 10 X source uh, token receipts in return. Next, 10 source derived from swap fees, HBAR native staking rewards and farm emissions is sent to the infinity pool. Since there is 20 source in the contract and 10x source is the total supply, the new ratio is now 1x source to 2 source. User A can actually then redeem their 10x source for the 20 source at any time based on this current ratio. So you can see now the X source token is actually worth double that of what the underlying source token is and you can swap back at that preferred rate or higher rate, which of course is perpetually going up based on what's happening with the reward inflows. Say user A does not redeem their X source, user B deposits 10 source <clears throat> in the pool and since the ratio is one to two, they get half of their deposit as X source, which would be five X source. Now the infinity pool contains 30 source and 15 X source, Hence, the ratio is maintained at one to two. The ratio only changes as source are sent to the infinity pool and distributed equally among all X source holders because each X source becomes worth more source. So the APR effectively is being defined by the infinity pool being equal to source over X source as a function and then over source X source I minus one multiply by 365 days times by 100, where source source X is the battle X source is the balance of each token in the infinity pool taken as an exchange rate. This rate is updated once per day, therefore subscripts F to I equals 24 hours. Note the APR displayed on the stake source UI is the five day average of the above formula. Cool. Well, hopefully that makes a bit of sense as we'll see a lot of different jargon in there. The too long didn't read, of course, is that the X source token is continually or perpetually going up in value against the source token. And that is how your rewards are effectively accumulating exactly the same as how H bar to H bar X works. Now, not only that as well, of course, the, the rumors effectively have come into fruition about those Plank Epoch NFTs. They are obviously utilizing them at the moment in order for users to get early access to the platform. But when everything has been hashed out, this is a uh, Discord message from Narioshi, who's one of the community uh, moderators. Uh, when everything has been hashed out, the PEC NFTs will actually be burnable for new sourcelings NFTs, which can actually be staked in community pools for additional APR boosts. And that was something that I was talking about in previous videos weeks, if not months ago. That I felt I had an inkling that potentially the NFTs were going to be used as APR boosters. And it looks like that is going to be the case. 
the conversion will be like this. So, and if any of you guys hold any of these NFTs, and of course you can pick them up on the secondary marketplaces via zoos, a gravity NFT will be convertible or burnable for a sourceling tier one, a weak nuclear for a sourceling tier two, a strong nuclear for a sourceling tier three, and an electromagnetic for sourceling tier four. And if you have the complete set, as we'd seen previously, so a gravity, a weak nuclear, a strong nuclear, and an electromagnetic, you will have a special sourceling tier which you can trade in for, which again, presumably based on how it's been done previously with the airdrops and stuff via the NFTs, will have a additional bonus on top of just holding the other source link tiers. So there's more to come out in the future and there is additional utility for those NFTs that many of us own to get those airdrops way back in the day when the platform initially launched. Okay then, how do you actually perform or enter a single sided staking pool. If you head over to sourceswap.finance, I will have that linked down in the description. Make sure you are on the correct URL. And you're not on some kind of phishing URL. Unfortunately, there are a lot of different scams happening at the moment. As Hedera continues to grow, there are more and more target uh, targeted attacks and phishing attacks taking place. Again, stay safe and never give out your private keys or your seed phrases. You will lose all of your crypto in those wallets. Over on sourceswap.finance, um, you will now notice that the stake tab over here, just to the right of the port, uh, to the left of the portfolio tab, is no longer grayed out, and you can actually click on it. So if I click on the actual stake tab, you are greeted by this particular screen: stake your source to earn triple rewards without the risk of impermanent loss in the infinity pool. How it works: phase one, stake source and receive your X source. So stake source to receive those tokens and earn triple rewards. In phase two, you can then stake those X source tokens further in community pools to earn HTS tokens. So this is another part of the single sided staking, which is going to be an awesome feature. The project's being incubated by Headstarter. So new projects entering Hedera's uh, sort of ecosystem, you'll be able to earn some of those project tokens before anybody else by staking those X source tokens in this particular pool. And then of course, in phase three, which we were just talking about, is those sourcing NFTs, which can be uh, used as an APR boost on your rewards that you're currently receiving. So if you scroll further down here, and of course I'm on desktop, but the process is going to be the same if you're on mobile. Phase one, stake your source. So your claimable source, everything's zero for me at the moment. We can see the current TVL at nearly $4.2 million. And the approximate APR currently is 37% on this particular single sided staking. Now, of course, this will probably decrease, well, potentially will decrease um, going forward into the future as things change. It also might not because there is a relationship between the buybacks of the pools and how much money is floating around in them. It could mean that we see sustained high APRs for a long period of time. It's just going to depend on what happens with the network. So let me log into Hashpack and I'll show you guys how to do this. It's really easy with just a couple of steps. Okie okay, okay. so now I'm logged into my Hashpack wallet. And of course, the first thing as always is to make sure that your, your uh, wallet is authorized to use or utilize the decentralized application that you're currently visiting. So on Source Swap's website, up in the top right hand corner, you're going to turn around and click connect wallet and just follow through the, with the procedure to connect your Hashpack wallet. If you're on mobile, copy the string ID and do it that way. If you're on a Chrome based browser, are you on a desktop or laptop, you can of course just click pair with Hashpack. Okay, and of course, make sure you've got some source tokens in that particular wallet and you've obviously got some HBAR in order to facilitate the different transactions. Now, what you're going to do first and foremost is click the stake button and we're going to enter how much the source we want to stake. So in this particular wallet, I've got 100 source tokens, which is worth roughly three and a half dollars. So the first thing it's going to ask me to do is associate the X source token. So I'm going to click that and it's going to pop up inside my wallet, which we can see here. And I'm just going to tap on approve. Um, in order to associate that particular X source token, which we'll be receiving as a receipt for depositing this source into the particular contract. It's still executing in my Hashpack wallet. We can see now at the top here, the associated token has actually completed. So I'm going to click that and inside my Hashpack wallet, it's now saying uh, done. So I'm going to click on done and back over to the source swap interface. Now I'm going to click the stake button again. Okay, so it's saying uh, access is currently restricted to NFT holders. So let me jump over onto a wallet that's actually got an NFT, which is my main wallet. Okie okay, dokie, okay. so I've obviously already got a bunch of source staked on this particular wallet. Um, so I've only got 0.1 available that I can actually stake uh, for demonstration purposes. After I've associated those different tokens, it may also ask you to associate wrapped HBAR if you've never made a transaction on SourceSwap previously. 
I'm going to click stake. It's going to wait for confirmation. I'm pressing execute right now inside my Hashpack wallet, um, unlocking my wallet and just executing that particular smart contract. And again, it's just waiting for that to take place. And we can see the transaction has actually succeeded. Um, and my source balance has obviously increased um, by the point one. And we can see my claimable source is, of course, the figure that I've got in here currently. We can also see the the current ratio between them, one uh, X source being equal to one source. And of course, this will update uh, every sort of 24 hours or so to show that the value is increasing. Now, if you want to leave um, single sided staking, of course, you can click unstake. You can hit max or whatever it may be, whatever percentage value that you want to unstake from the platform. And it will transfer your X source tokens back into source tokens at that particular rate. It works exactly the same as how H bar to H bar X works. Of course, there is a secondary way you can actually do this because the X source tokens are liquid. Again, the same as H bar X. You can, of course, go into the swap tab of source of swap and actually swap those tokens directly into something completely different if you wish to do so. And then maybe a bit of arbitrage based on how the platforms are currently running. Don't forget this is a decentralized AMM model. So sometimes it may be beneficial to actually swap the tokens back into say H bar or source instead of actually directly unstaking. But that's something you'll have to play with yourselves. It just goes to show that there are multiple different options of entering and leaving these decentralized types of pools. Anyway, Hopefully that shows you guys and gives you an idea of how to use the single sided staking on source swap labs. Of course, there are a triple reward mechanism. We can see there currently the APY is pushing nearly 40%. That may change going out into the future. And of course, the benefit of using that single sided staking is there's going to be APR boosts in the future and there is no impermanent loss that you have to worry about. If you guys did enjoy this video, of course, leave a like, drop a comment if you've got something to say. I do try and respond to as many of them as I can. And until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.